Alright, uh, my name is Jason. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the issue of... Oh wait, just so you're not, I'm not treating you fairly. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, tell me the truth, Jason. Yes. Okay. Alright, I'm here to talk to you about the issue of deterrence. Um, uh, some say that the death penalty can be used as a deterrent to crime. Uh, in fact, that's not the case. There was a recent uh, study in the Wall Street Journal that um, said basically uh, for every execution there are 70 less deaths. Uh, but the problem with that survey was that um, most variables such as uh, uh, the presence of violence in the community, the uh, availability of education, the availability of, uh, of mental health care, these uh, variables were completely ignored. Um, and it was therefore a really faulty survey. Um, others have kind of said that well, whatever the surveys say, uh, we should expect that the death penalty is a deterrent because, well, people fear death uh, more than any other punishment. And in fact, that's not really true either. Um, it doesn't really follow that uh, just because death is a, uh, is a serious punishment and everyone is kind of afraid of it, uh, that it's going to be the greatest deterrent. Um, in fact, studies have shown that uh, at, at a certain point, uh, uh, life in prison uh, is about equal with uh, the death penalty. And thirdly, um, this also assumes that uh, people uh, that are committing these crimes are making uh, kind of an analysis before they make the crime, uh, which is also not true. In fact, they just kind of group things into categories and say, oh well, I might be punished, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Or they don't even think about the punishment at all. Um, so, I think we find that from these arguments, uh, the issue of deterrence is really thrown out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, yeah, the, the court takes that very seriously, that um, these uh, so-called deterrence studies that try to show how much uh, one execution deters. Uh, it's a, it's a very strange calculation that society is going to have to make to figure out how many executions would take our murder rate as close to zero as we'd like. Um, that's very, uh, it's a very strange calculus for the legislature and the judicial branch to take under uh, advisement. So um, that's uh, very scary. Thank you for uh, the testimony, witness. Um, so uh, do we have another witness? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, court. Uh, my name Ah. is Brian McCann. I'm with the Austin chapter of the campaign to end a death penalty. You know Brian. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Okay, I do. Yes, oh. I know you. Do. There you are. Um, I think when we're, we're talking about the death penalty in Texas or elsewhere, I think taking in our surroundings for a moment is a, is a pretty instructive way to do so. Um, a few feet in front of us, we have a memorial to Confederate fallen dead um, a little north in UT's campus. Is is that what that is down that, there? That is in fact what that is oh. to those who, who died fighting for slavery. Um, on UT's campus we have statues to Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee. And I think that's important to keep in mind when we look at the kind of world that the death penalty operates in. It operates in a world that still is very racist. And I want to talk to you about... Yes? Can the, uh, can the court interrupt? Mm -hmm. Is there a statue for Abraham Lincoln or Ulysses S. Grant? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, there is one There is one of Martin Luther King hidden on the east side of campus, but um, oh. Oh, that's it. But um, The east side. You know, I want to talk to you all about how racist the death penalty is, something that um, I think a lot of times is overlooked when people try to argue that the death penalty is a just form of punishment that treats all citizens equally. Uh, currently, according to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund's most recent study, 45% uh, of people on death row in the United States are white, and about 42% are African American, a statistic that at first glance may seem pretty innocuous. It's about a 50-50 split. However, let's, let's think about that in relation to our own population here in the United States, in which 75% of U.S. citizens are white and about 12% are African American. This highlights a clear disparity in terms of who is getting death sentences and who is not. Furthermore, um, recent studies have shown that 20% of African Americans on the nation's death rows are sentenced to death by all white juries. Moreover, the American Bar Association found in 1998 that about 96% of states found a racial disparity in terms of victim and culprit ratios where death sentences were concerned. In fact, study after study has demonstrated that a white victim 
and a black culprit is the most likely combination when you control for everything else to generate a death sentence. So for those who say that the death penalty is about victims, about giving closure to victims, statistics like that suggest that certain victims are valued much more deeply than others in this society. Um, other, other statistics tell us that prosecutors are five times more likely to pursue the death penalty with African-American defendants than white defendants. Really, when we look to the death penalty, when we look to the people who are filling death row cells, those small six by seven cells, they generally are not white individuals, wealthy individuals, but they are marginalized individuals, African-Americans, poor people who couldn't afford adequate representation. The death penalty is the most recent expression of Jim Crow style justice that we see in Gina, that we saw back in the Jim Crow era, and we saw it during slavery. And that is one of many reasons why we have to fight for its abolition. Thank you. of the death penalty. So thank you very much, witness, uh, witness again. Um, is there another one? Is there somebody behind? Okay. Please state your name. Preston Mitchum. And you swear to tell the truth? I swear to tell the truth. Thank you. May it please the court. The death penalty is a violation of the Eighth Amendment's cruel and unusual punishment. In many cases, violate the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment's due process clause. The death penalty is racist, classist, and at many times convicts the innocent. How can a country that prides itself so much on freedom and equality executes its own people? It is a violation of our human rights and our civil rights. The death penalty is a hypocrisy to our already unequal system of justice. I can kill someone and that's all right. I mean, I'm sorry, and that's bad. But the legal system can execute me, and that's justified contradiction and idiocracy at its finest. America does not want to deal with Guantanamo Bay because it's located in Cuba. Well, guess what, America? We have our own Guantanamo Bay happening, and its name is the death penalty, and it must stop today. Thank you. That's a Good job. interesting comparison. Um, court finds that very uh, compelling to compare that to Guantanamo, which is such a despicable thing, but, um, you know, it's, uh, the human rights violations are also happening here. Thank you. Hello, I'm Evelyn Israel, and I promise to tell the truth. Thank you. Um, I would like to say today that the death penalty is unjust <laughs> because it assumes that there's no possibility that people can change. And without the belief that people can change, there's no hope for the future. If we think about all the bad things that have happened in the world and all the horrible injustices that have gone on throughout history, like slavery and um, the genocides that have gone on, and we believe that they couldn't change and that the people in the societies that have created them couldn't change, how could we even go on living? And why would I even be up here today speaking? The death penalty assumes that nobody who is on death row could change and that they could improve and not commit the same crimes in the future. The idea of the whole prison system is supposed to be to reform individuals so that they can become better and so that they can exist and not cause harm in society. And that's why we have people who have limited jail sentences and we let them out. Why is it for a select few we don't think that they could ever change? And I just think that that's first of all, completely unfair, but also unrealistic, because everyone has the possibility for change, and without that belief, we can have no hope in the future, or in anyone. Thank you, Woo! Evelyn. 